Hey guys, Dan here, and I got a question for you. Where do you take somebody that's been injured in a peekaboo accident? I see you. Oh. You guys ever watch those? Oh, hey, Dan here. Did you guys ever watch those videos? Uh, that one channel, like What's Inside or something like that, where a father and a son. <laughs> where a father and a son um, take everything apart, like cut things in half and stuff, uh, to show what's inside. They actually did it to their, uh, to their Google Play button. They, when, they, when they reached, I think, a million, they got the uh, gold or, I don't know, something, whatever. Um, we're gonna do a what's inside video of my friend's uh, vertical shaft pressure washer pump that we changed out the other day because it's cracked on the top. Uh, right here, it's cracked. The housing's cracked. Now you can buy a new housing, just the uh, the bottom part here. But I don't know how difficult that would be um, to change out. So let's find out by taking it apart. We don't need this anymore. Um, so I said, hey, if you're not going to need it, because I put the new one on his pump form, did a nice video of that. Um, I was like, hey, if you don't need it, then let me uh, let me do a video showing my subscribers and stuff what's inside here. So. Let's do that. So this is a three-legged type pump. The model number of this is SRMW 2.2G26, which is also the 2.2G24. It's pretty much the same pump. 2.2 uh, gallon per minute, roughly 2,500 PSI is what we're gonna find here. Uh, yeah, so, uh, like I said, the housing is cracked on the top here, and I don't know, the way these things mount, and then you roll them around, and the garden hose, and the pressure wand, and everything's connected, it's a lot of torque on these cheap things right here, and there's really no protection when it's under the unit, and you're rolling it around, and your hoses are, whole, are connected to it, and you're dragging your hoses, and all of a sudden you have leverage, and this is a weak point because it's drilled and tapped right here, so you gotta figure, that could be why it cracked in the first place, but uh, we'll take it apart. So what we're gonna start with is the check valve or the, um, the chemical injector, the downstream chemical injector. So let's check that out. Right, this is the downstream chemical injector. So I'll go ahead and take this apart and see what's up. So the downstream chemical injector, the way this works is on the pressure side, your fresh water comes in this way goes through the whole pumping structure and pressure is built and volume is built and then volume comes out of here with the black tip or the pink tip. Um, a heavy flow is gonna come out, really good amount is gonna come out, it's gonna create a vacuum right here and the siphon hose here going into your bleach bucket or your detergent bucket is gonna end up getting sucked in because the flow is causing a vacuum right here. So. What we're gonna do is take this apart because sometimes your check valve or your, uh, your downstream chemical injector, your siphon, will get stuck. And so let me show you what you can find in here, what you can expect. Probably should have spent a little bit more time on getting the right um, tools. So this is your downstream chemical injector ball just fell out. Here's the spring and let me find the ball. Here's the little ball and the spring and the actual nipple itself. So the ball is going to go right here like this. The spring goes right here on top and then this mounts into here like that. What happens is the spring is pushing the ball up against this hole. So nothing, no water can blow out while the water is flowing out. The ball is pushed up from the spring. Now that spring is gonna be overcome by the flow creating a suction on that ball, pulling the ball down, 
Right now the ball's up. When the spring is loose, then you can flow through. So you have your spring and your ball. Now what will happen sometimes is bleach will corrode this ball. And it will corrode, especially this one being metal, it will corrode the inside. You can see it's pretty yucky all around already. And what will happen is the ball will get stuck up in here. And so sometimes a quick fix is to take some type of a wire, something that you can poke down into here that's strong enough to push the ball free and it'll pop back up. You can go boing -um, boing -um, boing -um, boing -um, boing -um with something in there because the spring is going to allow that to happen. So If you have something like a pick or an awl, you can push on the ball. This one's not quite long enough, but you can push on the ball and separate the ball from the housing. So you can buy this kit, the downstream chemical injector kit, and they're pretty much all the same regardless. And I'm pretty sure I link to these in my video description. But check the comment section and I'll make links to these parts to stuff like this. So there's your downstream chemical injector. That's all that is to it. So if you wanted to replace yours because it's not working right, it's stuck, it's broke, whatever, uh, first figure out a way to push something in there that's long enough and thin enough there that you can push the ball free and it'll come back and you can feel it. See it? See how it's pushing on my it's doing that, the spring's doing that, and I'm pushing on the ball. If the ball was stuck, it wouldn't move, and it'd be like, oh, what the hell? You can push down and it'll pop back up. The cool thing about this is, is you don't have to take this off in order to do that, to do that quick fix, all right? If this was mounted, and the spring's mounted in there, you can do that with something such as this, and boing, 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 and there you go. Uh, a good maintenance tip and what I like to do is I take some WD-40 and I like to shoot a little WD-40 into my downstream chemical injector just to coat everything. Now the ball that comes with my kit is a nylon ball. Um, that's good and that's bad. Nylon's good because it's not going to corrode. Um, it's bad because the nylon is going to thin out. The ball is going to get thinner, thinner and thinner over time. And, um, and eventually it's gonna like start pitting and stuff like that. And pretty soon the, not pretty soon, but after time, uh, water will start skeeting out of here. And if you start seeing a little bit of, a, of stuff coming out, little, little flow coming out, then you've got too much, uh, your ball, your, you probably have a nylon ball, or you have so much corrosion around the original, the metal ball, that it's not seating properly. Uh, so you'd want to take it apart and clean it. So there's your downstream chemical injector. Pretty cool. This thing's so corroded and we're probably just gonna throw this out. Uh, so next up is, we're gonna check out this. This is like the thermo release valve or something like that. And what happens with this garbage can as a uh, workbench is when you're off the trigger and pressure is building up uh, this will start letting water come out on top of your um, unloader valve now I think it has something to do with with heat I don't know it's called a thermo coupler or something like that so I don't know what's gonna happen when I take this apart or what's in here but we're gonna find out together So, all right, well, there you go. There's nothing here. Can't blow back through it that way. Can't blow back through it that way. So I guess it's gonna take a lot of pressure to build up, but then eventually it's gonna start letting water out, releasing pressure, and I think it has something to do with this right here. 
I think this opens up somehow and lets water flow out in case you're uh, backing up your pump. Not 100% sure because my big boy pump doesn't have anything like this, so I don't really pay much attention to it. It's not something that really concerned me. Uh, but let's see if there's something that's like repairable or something. I don't know. I have no idea what's in here. Tore my glove. Should probably have a socket for this, but that's okay. This is going to have something to do you know, with letting water bypass the pump system in order to get water to come out and not blow up your pump from too much back pressure. See that? That looks like something that's like temperature. I don't know. Yeah, there's a little button in there. There's like a little push button in there. I don't know what it is. Probably see it a lot better when we take off this whole shell. So we got that loose. And I'm gonna leave it just like that for when we, there's no spring or anything in there. So when we take this off, we'll check it out. But let's move on to the so remember this, we'll put this back in um, just finger tight. We'll get back to it when we take this further apart. This is the unloader valve right here. And this will allow water, your fresh water is going in and going into the pump and the pump's doing its magic and then it's coming out this way. But when you let off the trigger, water backs up, your unloader valve is gonna open and allow backed up water pressure that the pump is building to recirculate and go back around the pump. So that way the pump doesn't start foaming and fizzing and boiling the water and then it cavitates because it's dry. Um, the water needs to continue flowing. That's what this is for. Opens up and allows the water to continue flowing. If you don't get pressure when you squeeze your trigger, there's a good chance that this is stuck open and the water's still flowing. Um, so that's this. This right here, adjust the amount of pressure that you are allowed uh, to go out your wand. You need a pressure gauge in order to do that to know that you're around the specs of this pump. But you loosen up this jam nut and then you put your Allen key in here, one of these, and you adjust this while you're holding the trigger and you can literally adjust, I believe, I've never done it, you can adjust the pressure output of your pump. This, this thing, this unit is two jobs. It lets the valve open to allow water to circulate, but it also has internal parts in here that you can adjust the amount of pressure that's gonna come out the wand. And if it's, if you got too much pressure or too little pressure, whatever, then it goes around. Okay, I just lost the bulb. Oh, there it is, it's still there. Um, I don't adjust pressures, some people do. I'm not the source for that. Let me see if I can get this loose. And so this is called your unloader valve. This right here is the pressure part, right? Yeah. That's the spring and the pressure part. We'll put that back together. That's for your pressure. This is the actual unloader valve itself. Oh, stand by. Maybe I got it. Yep. This one's a little bit different than the one that I use with, you know, my commercial pump. Um, that one has the actual handle dial that you can adjust the pressures with. Um, this one, you do it manually with a, a jam nut and the uh, and the Allen bolt. That was what that spring was all about. I don't want to show you that right now. I don't want to get into that right now. I want to get into the unloader valve because the unloader valve you can purchase separately and if you squeeze the trigger 
your pressure washer's on, and it's brrrr, and you squeeze the trigger, and it doesn't go brrrr, and start building pressure and coming out the wand, very good chance your unloader valve is stuck. And it doesn't, it's not letting the water, when you squeeze the trigger, and now all of a sudden the back pressure that was built up here has the valve open and the water's flowing. All of a sudden you release the trigger and the back pressure's now trying, you know, it's just flowing out, but it's not, it's not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not back pressure, but like the flow. It's, it thinks that you're off the trigger. And so the pressure's going around and around and around. And when you squeeze the trigger and the water starts going this way, it should allow this to close and direct all of the force out this way. That's the right way to say it. So if that doesn't happen, then your unloader valve is bad. I think there's two gaskets on here. Yeah. So this is your unloader valve right here and it's pretty crappy. Listen. That's pretty kind of yucky to move, but. Okay, now that the spring is tight, now you can't really move it. You have the two, and when you get it, it's gonna come like this, and it's probably already gonna be preset to your PSI. When you order it, you order the right one, I believe. But this fits deep inside here, like this. And as you see, when this plunger is this way, it's far enough beyond this that the plunger is stopping the water from going this way. When this plunger opens this way, because back pressure backs up and it opens the valve, I can't really do it by hand, but it opens, it'll open this valve, whoop, and then water can now go from the pump this way because it's stopping right here because you're off the trigger. So water stops here, this opens up with, with pressure and it, it starts to go around. This is your unloader valve. You saw how easy it is for me to take it apart, right? Um, I, I'm pretty sure there's tons of videos on how to change an unloader valve, but there you go. That's it, adjustable wrench and there, there it is. Now inside your unloader valve, and if, if you need to change it out, it really is that simple. So if you're not getting pressure uh, buildup, it could just be that this is all gunked up. Maybe take it apart, wire brush it, clean it up, maybe put it back together and then it'll work. But here, this is the pressure side. When you're trying to build pressure, putting it back together the way it's built like this and then inside here there's a perfect hole for this nipple right here that sits on top of this spring right here that fits inside here like this and like that and then this fits inside the spring like this. And then this has the other end of this screw with the jam nut inside there that mates to that plate that's on top of the spring that adjusts. That spring's adjustable. That spring is the amount of adjustment for pressure. The more spring there is, the more that you have this here tightened down, this set screw tightened down, I believe the more pressure you're gonna create at the wand. It could be the other way around. I don't know, I've never done it. But if you're having issues, that's what this is. This is where you need to start doing some, some research, okay? You squeeze the trigger and you're not getting pressure, pressure's not coming out, and the RPMs of the pump's not changing, this is probably stuck get another one or take it apart, maybe clean it up, check it out, make sure it's not all corroded uh, and put it back together. Unloader valve, adjust your pressure, loosen the jam nut, 
Allen key in the top, tighten it down, check it. You gotta have a, a gauge though to know what your pressure is. That's your unloader valve. Um, these are your check valves. I'm not gonna take those apart on the outside because that's something you and me will never really mess with. Uh, but one thing we can do is take apart the pump. Take this apart because this is something that you could buy separately to replace where this was cracked on top. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And so this isn't gonna let me. Okay, one second please. Okay, I just gave them swift hits with my dead blow. Uh, so we'll take this apart and see what we got. Three Allen bolts on the top. And they sell these housings separately for like 50 bucks. And I'm pretty sure they come all together with everything already on them. The question is, how hard is it to change this? Let's just say you cracked your housing like my friend did on this. Um, or let's just say you you uh, need a new unloader valve and you can't find just an unloader valve for, I don't know, let's pretend it's 20 bucks, but you can get this whole shell for 50 bucks, maybe. So this would be mounted to your engine, one, two, three, going up, and this is the shell. that you can take apart. So it doesn't look like it's very difficult to do. Um, I do see this though. There are chambers in these. These washers have slots that are chambered. So I think you better know what you're doing if you take those apart. So you see how this one's lined up this way? Huh. So it doesn't look like it's very difficult to do, but like I said, you got these chambers, you better know what you're doing with them. You better make sure you have these slots lined up. Or I have a feeling you're not gonna have water flowing properly. So as the shaft is spinning, these three fingers are going up and down, and you got one, two, three, and you got one, two, three, which lines up with one, two, three, which I assume is how the pressure is built, somehow, one way or another. So these three pistons are going up and down. And while they're going up and down, I guess it creates pressure. But like a car engine, like a cylinder or something, like the piston going up and down creates compression. And then you got these tiny little holes at the very top, one, two here, and one here. So you got one, two and you got one here I'm not gonna pretend to know because I don't uh, but so you have these three pistons that go up and down inside these cylinders and I guess that's creating pressure but you know what let's see what it does inside where these check valves are so to answer your question yes this is something that can easily be swapped out it can easily be changed um, doesn't seem like it's very difficult to do as I just put it back together but like I said when you take it apart you need to be very very careful with these nylon spacers whatever they're called you need to really make sure that you don't put them in because you see I can put them in cattywampus here and they are slotted 
I got four slots. So you better, you better make sure that when you take it apart, you know exactly how it goes back together because that's valving. And you see how there's openings here? There's a groove here, a groove here, here, here. And that groove is gonna have something to do lining up somehow one way or another with this pump. Right here, those grooves come out beyond the pump. Why? I don't know. But if you take this apart to buy a new one and it comes with as a full assembly, a whole assembly ready to go, then just be warned that there are these nylon bushings in here that are slotted that you need to make sure if it comes out with this, you lay this like this, and, and if, it's, if it comes out like this, and you're like this, you better look to see, okay, this one's slotted this way, so I'm going to put it on here just like this. You better make sure you have it right. Now, I don't know what's going on. If these things end up spinning, just be careful. If you put it back exactly the way you take it off, you can't go wrong. So do that. Uh, and that's why we're doing this video. So. What I wanted to look at was the thermo coupler, th thermo thingy here for letting the water pee out, but you can't see it because of the valving. The valves are in the way here, but I don't know. Let's see what's, what's in these valves. I really should just get a socket, my socket set, and do this right, but. All right, we'll get through it. Now this might have some type of crazy springs in here or something. I don't know. So be careful. Watch your eyeballs. So far, everything's been pretty safe. But you never know, man. There's probably some crazy springs in here or something that's going to do something to create some type of pressure. I don't know. Just don't point it at your expensive car. Okay, no. No, it's just this. It's like a plug. And I see nothing. So, I mean, there's some type of something in there. I don't know what it is. But there's like, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I just put my all in there. I just broke it. I don't know what that is. It doesn't look like it's something at you and I's level to change. Uh, so if you suspect you have a problem in these one of these three valves, check valves, whatever, you're going to want to get a new unit. And if you get a new unit, hopefully it comes with your uh, um, bypass, whatever the hell it's called and uh, your thermo thing here. But this opens up, somehow this opens up uh, in here having to do with pressure and I don't think the water gets to here until this has something to do with, I don't know, either temperature or something. It has something to do with thermo, it's a thermo something, thermo coupler, thermo release coupler, something like that. I don't know, somebody will leave it in the comment section. Uh, but that goes here. And that's that and that's that so all right and then this is this so we got this thing all the way apart and you got the three check valves here so that's it I mean that's what's to this shelf that's what's inside your check valve or whatever the heck it's called um, release gosh now I'm brain farting uh, but you got that uh, and you got your release on the back side here, so that's super simple. And you have your, of course, on the fresh water or on the pressure side, you have your downstream chemical injector here, and then you have your valve here, and how to adjust your pressure here, uh, and that's it. 
that's a done deal. So if you needed a new pump, I don't think you could buy this any cheaper than if you got the whole assembly already together for 140 bucks or less shipped to your door. Um, 100 bucks, I believe, plus shipping for a brand new pump. I don't think you're gonna buy this much less than that. I mean, this, this is the meat and potatoes of it. So as you see, the shaft spins from the engine and these pistons are going up and down. And that's all it is. And so these pistons are, I guess they're just going up and down and creating pressure in there. Pushing down, drawing up, pushing down, drawing up, and they're doing it so fast that it's pulling water in from here and forcing it out. And the check valves are only letting the water go out, not in. So it draws the water in and it pushes the water down. And when it pushes the water down, it, the check valve goes this way and then out. And if it, when it then on the next stroke, it draws more water in and down, and in and down, and in and out, up, down, up, down, in, out, and the water's going. So this piston suck, push, suck, push. And then the check valve here is only letting the water push. It won't allow the piston sucking up to suck up from here. It's only gonna suck up from here, all right? And then when you let off your trigger and the water backs up, this valve opens to allow your water from these check valves that it goes in, out. This opens and the water goes in, out, and then back around because this is closed. Your hand's off the trigger. So it goes around and back in, out. And so that's your vicious circle of life right there for your pump. So in, out, in, out, right here. And then there's your um, valving to allow that water to go back around. If this, if this is stuck closed and water can't go back around, then what's gonna happen is you're not gonna get fresh water on your up stroke, on your in. You're gonna get in and then you're, you're not, but you're not gonna get the in. You're not, you're, you're not gonna get the out because water's backed up now. The pump's not gonna be able to overcome your handle. Your handle's closed. So the water's getting sucked in from the garden hose and then the pump's pushing it down times three and that water needs to go somewhere. And, and where's it gonna go? It can't go anywhere. <clears throat> so it's backing up right here and when it backs up here, these pistons are now going up and down, up and down, up and down, but they're not able to get clean water, fresh water or cool water, I should say, because it's all getting hot now. And so this has to open to allow the water to flow and go back through. And I think if it starts to get too hot because it's the same water all the time recirculating because you're off the trigger, I think that's when this opens up and lets water pee out. And I remember touching that water and it's very warm. Um, it's gonna allow water to pee out in order to release the pressure here so fresh water can come in and start cooling things down. That's why I think it's called a thermo release or something like that. Um, and it has something to do with this right here. So there you go, that's how it works. There's your pump, there's your housing. So how a pressure washer pump works, there it is. Three pistons, push up, so you, you, got, you, got, you got pull, push, pull, push, pull, push. Pulling water, pushing water, pulling water, pushing water. That's all it is. And as it pushes, it pushes against these check valves, comes around and goes out your wand. And as it's going out your wand with a good flow, it siphons in your detergent. If you don't have a good flow, then pressure starts backing up, then the little ball with the spring, the spring gets pushed up. The ball gets pushed up because water isn't flowing anymore fast to pull the ball down against the spring. So if you have the black tip or the pink tip and you got water flowing fast, then it's gonna create a big vacuum right here and pull the ball down, it'll overcome the spring. If water isn't flowing fast, then the pump is pressurizing this, so the pressure pushes the ball back up, which makes it so you can't get detergent. Also makes it so water doesn't skeet out this hole. So if you have a problem 
and you're not able to get detergent and you got the black tip or the pink tip and you're like, hey, how come I can't get detergent? It's because one of two things. The ball is stuck and you need to take something and do like I showed you, blinga, 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 and make sure that the ball's loose. And if the ball appears to be loose and you're like, well, I don't understand, it should work, then you have pressure building up. By the time you release your trigger, you still have pressure building up. You can have bad connections. You could have cheap hose. You could have way too long of hose for the pump. Um, some people say they can't get 150 feet with a pressure washer because it just creates too much back pressure. I got 150 feet on mine and another 50 foot that I've used, 200 feet, but it's a commercial pump. Uh, with these lower cost ones, you might not be able to do that. You might really need maximum flow, 50 to 100 foot hose at the most, and it has to be good hose. You have to have a good wand and you gotta have a good clean tip at the end. Anything that's backing it up, that's backing up the pressure is gonna back up the, uh, the spring. So my advice to you, if you can't get your siphon to draw chemicals, then take the hose off at the closest point, turn on the garden hose, and just listen. Let water flow. You should hear a little air suction. All right, you should hear it. You can take a spit bubble and put a little spit bubble on there and it'll suck the spit down. All right, if it works good, then connect your hose. And if you have two hoses together, take the second one off and do the same check. You should still have good flow. And you can do this with the pump off. You should still have flow. If the water's just free flowing, it should pull the siphon down. Um, do that all the way through till you find where it stopped doing that and you just found your problem. If, it, if as soon as you put your hose on it does it, then you have a problem with the connector or the hose itself and you can't go cheap. The Blue Hawk and stuff like that is garbage from like Lowe's and Home Depot. It's garbage. You got to get a good hose. Uh, I link to them. Um, I'll try to link to a good hose assembly. I'll try to link to this as a unit. I'll link to this as a separate part. I'll link to the downstream chemical injector as a separate part. I'll link to the hose as a separate part that I use. Uh, and I'll put that, I'll pin it in my comment section so you guys can check that out. So anyway, so that's what's inside. I've never taken one apart and I think that the, th the three of us, me, you, and YouTube, we just figured this out together exactly how this works. So if you're out in the field and you have a problem, hopefully you'll remember this video. So this is how it works. And that's what's inside a pressure washer pump. Uh, guys, really appreciate you hanging out with me today. Sorry I'm not totally in the shot. I think I am, but uh, I'll see you guys uh, on the next one.